Maailmankaikkeus alkoi erittäin tiheästä ja kuumasta tilasta, ja aivan alkuaikojen jälkeiset tapahtumat tunnetaankin jo varsin hyvin. Mutta mikä maailmankaikkeutta odottaa tulevaisuudessa? Teoreettiseen kosmologiaan erikoistunut astrofyysikko Katie Mack käy läpi kirjassaan kaiken loppu, tähtitieteellisesti katsoen, läpi viisi mahdollista loppua kaikkeudelle, niin kuin me tällä hetkellä sen ymmärrämme. Keiri toimii tällä hetkellä fysiikan apulaisprofessorina pohjois karolainan osavaltion yliopistossa. Mä haastattelin häntä videopuhelussa jo etukäteen aikavyöhykesyistä, ja mennään nyt ottamaan selvää, miten kaikki loppuu, tähtitieteellisesti katsoen. Um, so. Welcome aboard. Uh, we are about Thank you. to we are about to enter the end times. Uh, uh, Katie Max, yes. so, thank you so much for this interview. Um, we welcome you as our guide in these murky waters. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I'm happy to be here. Yeah. Uh, so, so a very easy question for you at the beginning. In your book, The End of Everything, you present five possible scenarios on how the universe will end. So, so can mm -hmm. you can you summarize them for us? Sure, sure. Yeah. So there are different possibilities depending on how the universe evolves into the future. So right now we know that the universe is expanding. Um, and what that looks like is that galaxies are getting farther apart from each other. And so one of the big questions is, will we continue expanding forever or will the universe recollapse? And so um, a couple of the scenarios are, um, you know, the first one is maybe the expansion stops and everything comes together and, and we come back into something like a big bang in reverse um, another option is that we do continue expanding forever um, and as that happens everything gets farther and farther apart and the universe gets colder and darker and emptier and it all just kind of fades away uh, that's called a heat death uh, another option is that the expansion speeds up and speeds up in a in a way that would actually start tearing apart galaxies themselves so not just moving things away from each other but actually building up Uh, expansion within objects, within galaxies, stars, people, and just tear everything apart. That's called the big rip. Less likely, but uh, an exciting option. Uh, then there are a couple of weirder ones. There's uh, vacuum decay, which is where a kind of bubble of a different kind of space appears somewhere in the universe and expands through it and destroys everything. Uh, and then Yay. there's <laughs> yeah, yeah, that one's that one's fun because it would be very sudden. <laughs> yeah. um, and then there's uh, bouncing cosmology, so different ways that the universe could uh, evolve to some kind of end, either expand or or a contraction, and then start over again and have a new big bang. And so I go through all the different possibilities for that as well. Uh, do you do you have a personal favorite, and why choose that? <laughs> I do. I have a favorite. Vacuum decay is my favorite. Uh, the reason is that it is very sudden. It's very um, uh, kind of unexpected. It's something that would be unpredictable. So the way vacuum decay works is this bubble of a different case appears uh, based on a, a kind of quantum transition at a at a subatomic level, just a, a very random event that could happen spontaneously anywhere in the universe. And when that happens, uh, it creates this cascade that, 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 you know, destroys the whole universe. And I think that's uh, just a wild and uh, vaguely frightening notion. <laughs> um, although I should say that uh, it's very unlikely to happen and certainly unlikely to happen soon. So it's not something to worry about, um, but it is a, Uh, it is something that as physicists we we do calculations about and we and we um, consider as a possibility and and you were very uh, uh, enthusiastic about the math involved yeah 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 I mean you know it is all all of this is done in the language of math we you know we figure out what's happened in the past and we extrapolate into the future based on our mathematical principles based on how we think the universe works at a fundamental level. Um, but I should say that I, I leave that out of the book. I don't, uh, the book is not mathematical. I try and, I try and um, really just talk about the concepts and the, uh, the physics involved and what it would all look like and what it would feel like um, in, in some cases. Uh, but I, I don't have a bunch of equations in the book or anything like that. 
no yeah yeah i can vouch for that uh i uh, and i love the how how it's so it's so concrete uh, mm. and and it's fun and and kind of preposterous that <laughs> that that uh, just using math based on what mm. we know now we can mm. actually predict these things and i love that yeah. you had you, you had uh, I, i actually wrote it down because it was such a fun bit with only hours to go the earth cannot hold together our planet explodes <laughs> <laughs> so it's like yeah we can actually say that <laughs> yeah yeah for for the big rip yeah you can you can get very precise uh, uh, descriptions of, you know very precise predictions of of timing if you if you have certain data yeah yeah but um, we we actually don't know how the universe will end exactly and and these five right. scenarios or classes of scenarios maybe that that you uh, yeah. present in the book are just based on what we know now and and you also mm-hmm. write that we don't really know everything just yet right so 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 what sort of information are we missing and will there be a sequel to your book <laughs> <laughs> um so there's a lot that we're missing uh the we're missing most of the universe in some sense so so when you figure when you look at what the universe is made of um there you know we usually think of stars and planets and galaxies and dust and gas and all of that Uh, but when you actually measure it uh, based on our on our observations on what we see in the cosmos and how we see it behaving, most of the universe is dark energy. It's a kind of mysterious something that's making the universe expand faster. And then most of what's left is dark matter, which is a mysterious something that pulls galaxies together, that creates uh, you know the gravity that everything uh, together in galaxies. And the part that we can see is only about five percent of the universe. And so until we know what dark energy is and how dark energy really works, we don't know how it will affect the future expansion of the universe. So we have some ideas. Um, Our current best guess about dark energy is that it's called, it's something called a cosmological constant. It's just kind of a property of space that it has this kind of stretchiness built into it and that the universe expands faster But it could be something that changes its nature, that goes from being an expanding force to a contracting force, or something that gets more powerful over time. So, when when we figure out what dark energy is, that'll give us a much better idea of the future evolution of the universe. And dark matter is an interesting one too, because although um, the nature of dark matter itself doesn't seem to really affect the future evolution of the universe, it's some new stuff in the universe. It's probably some new particle that we haven't detected yet. And so that gives us a clue as to how how our understanding of particle physics will change, how our understanding of the basic building blocks of the universe will change. And so if we figure out what dark matter is, that might lead us to what you might call an ultimate theory of the universe, of of the interactions of stuff in the in the cosmos, the fundamental interactions of the universe. And that could give us a clue about the shape of the cosmos, about you know its past, its future, whether this uh, vacuum decay catastrophe could happen or not. Um, so those are really the big mysteries that we're trying to figure out that will give us clues as to the future evolution of the cosmos. Um, And I don't know. Uh, I don't know when we'll figure that out. I don't know, um, you know, how close we are to an answer. But a lot of us are working very hard. My research is in dark matter, so I'm I'm really working hard on trying to figure that part out. Um, but I think that um, I think that in the next few years we will get a lot more data. We have some really exciting observations and experiments going on that will tell us a lot about both dark matter and dark energy. Um, and um, yeah, and hopefully, uh, hopefully we will know some of these answers at least a little bit better than we do now um, in the next few years. So maybe there will be room for a sequel to to tie up some of these loose. I'm not sure. Yeah, well, let's hope for that because that would mean new physics, right? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Yay! Uh, um, you 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 do tackle at the end of the book. You you tackle uh, this kind of a big question for us as, as humans. So wh- where does this leave humanity? We are talking about the end mm-hmm. of everything and it's yeah. kind of a distant thing 
Mm -hmm. And should be emphasized that most of these, besides the, the vacuum energy death, uh, vacuum decay death bubble, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's it's somewhere in the distant future. But where does yeah. this leave humanity? Like, should we worry or what's our legacy as, yeah. as intelligent beings? Yeah, it's a really interesting question. I should say even vacuum decay, uh, we think it's very, very unlikely to happen within the next trillion, 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 trillion years. You know, it's a long time away if it's if it's going to happen, most likely. Um, but yeah, there is a there is a question because it makes a difference whether, you know, does the universe go on forever or does it not go on forever? And and as people, I think that we see those two possibilities very differently, even if we're talking about billions or trillions of years in the future, um, because it has to do with, uh, as you say, our legacy as, as humans. Um, you know, if the universe will someday end, then there's a, there will come a time when sense of humanity will no longer have mattered, even, you know, if we're long dead by then, if the universe goes on, you can think, well, you know, we affected other things, you know, we left our mark, but if it's all going to be over, that mark is washed away, right? And so it's it's kind of a troubling concept. And so one of the things I did uh, toward the end of the book is I went around and I talked to a bunch of my colleagues and I mostly was going around to talk to my colleagues about you know, their ideas about the the science, you know, the mathematics and and where cosmology is heading where we're going and understanding the universe but I also made sure every time to ask uh, the question how does the end of the universe make you feel um, yeah. and I really wanted to know how people think about this when when it's what you work on all the time um, how do you think about the future evolution of the cosmos and and I found there there were really a wide variety answers you know some people were like oh i think it's fine you know we should be transient it's not a problem you know we, we're we're meant to just fade away and that's great um and some people were really troubled by the idea that we will be forgotten by the cosmos yeah. um and so i uh, i found that i found that really interesting and you know i i'm still not sure exactly where i fall on that spectrum between being super happy about it and being super unhappy about it <laughs> Um, I back and forth a little, but uh, but it, it definitely kind of puts you in an interesting headspace. It, it gives you a different perspective on the world to uh, to think about, you know, what's going to happen in the end and and what how our whole cosmic narrative concludes. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a huge thing uh, mm -hmm. that emerges from the equations, kind of. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I should say that despite. Uh, the subject matter, this is an um, exhilarating and also a very funny book. Like, was it, was, <laughs> it, fun, was it fun to write? Oh, it was, it was hugely fun to write. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you know, I felt, I kind of felt like if you're writing about ultimate destruction, you have to keep it light somehow. Right? Yes. So, um, and, and there's also, I don't know, there's just a, a feeling of um, it, it, you have to laugh, right? Because this is these these ideas are too big and scary and destruct disruptive, and you can't just you can't just be you know crushed by by the thoughts. So so for me, it does naturally kind of make me laugh, but it's kind of a nervous laugh, you know, like <laughs> like when you're at the top of the roller coaster, you're like, oh, this is fine. <laughs> um, and so I I just kind of um, I just kind of put all that in in there, you know, uh, when I when I came across things that that um you know in my reading or in my uh discussion made me want to laugh i i wanted to put that in. i i you know i i sort of i write like i talk um in in that sense i i just i kind of wanted to to keep all of the um the human aspect uh in the book so um i'm glad that it it came through it it really did and and i think the the, the thought about roller coaster came to me as well as like a yee because it's so <laughs> yeah it's it's kind it's nuts but at the same time it's like so super awesome that that even if we don't really know everything just yet uh mm -hmm. we, we still have the math that gives mm -hmm. us these ridiculous uh, answers <laughs> and yeah. results yeah mm -hmm. it's crazy but great. yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah.